Tonight, for the first time, President Obama's aunt, who for years lived in this country illegally, is telling her story. I'm Lisa Hughes. And I'm Jack Williams. Zatuni Onyango lives in South Boston in public housing. She's unemployed. She collects disability. And insisting her nephew never pulled any strings for her. Recently, she sat down for an exclusive interview with Jonathan Elias. And Jonathan, she's not making any apologies. Jack, she makes none. In fact, she's very fiery. The mention of her name makes many in Boston angry. Angry because she is living off of a system that she's never paid into. Angry because she is from a family that is now very wealthy, yet she remains a burden to Massachusetts taxpayers. If I come as an immigrant, you have the obligation to make me a citizen. This is President Obama's aunt, a woman many say is the poster child of our broken immigration system. We only found out about her back in 2008. It was the weekend before the November election. Democratic presidential nominee, Senator Barack Obama, started getting questions about his aunt. Zaytuni Onyango of Kenya, an illegal immigrant living in public housing in Boston. You're here illegally. And he's running for the president of the United States. That's what I'm saying is. Listen, Obama did not know my whereabouts. For the first time, Zaytuni is setting the record straight, sitting down with me for this interview. She had come to the United States in 2000 and says she had every intention of going back to Kenya. But she says she got sick and spent time in a hospital and nearly died. To me, American's dream became American's was my American's worst nightmare. Why? Because of what I have gone through. Tell me what you've gone through. That uh, is a hell of a lot. Hell of a lot. She became political fodder intended to hurt her nephew. She also became a focal point of anger. How could Zaytuni be here illegally for years living in government housing? Have been treated like public enemy number one. In 2004, Zaytuni was ordered out of the country by an immigration judge. She didn't leave. Did you know that you were staying in this country illegally? I knew I had a state. She says once she got out of the hospital, she lived in a homeless shelter for nearly two years and then was assigned public housing despite thousands of legal residents also waiting for that kind of assistance. How do you respond to those families that would say, why is she getting anything? Listen, let me tell you. I don't mind. You can take that house. I can even be on the streets with homeless people. I didn't ask for it. They gave it to me. And you better just ask the system. Ask your system. I didn't create the system. And she's right, it. but what not apologetic. When news of Zaytuni broke, it was of national interest. How could she be living here so long illegally? There are people that, that need assistance who have been paying into the system, and they've waited in line, and they've, they've waited their turn, and then somebody like you, they say, comes along, and you never waited in line, and you never paid into the system, and yet you took advantage of the system. I did not take any advantage of the system. The system took advantage on me. When I asked her how she sees it that way, all she would say is... I don't want to go into details. It's not going to help me. It's not going to help you. She says she was diagnosed disabled by a doctor back in 2004. So in addition to public housing, she tells me she's been receiving and living off disability checks of nearly $700 a month. But how has she been able to stay? Hi, Barack Hussein Obama. In 2009, Obama was sworn in. Zaytuni was invited and attended the inauguration. The question is, did her nephew influence an immigration judge to change his mind? Because in 2004, that judge ordered her out. This past May, that same judge granted her asylum. No influence at all from nobody, from nowhere. Don't drag my child into this. If not influence, then how about money? She says she's broke, yet hired a prominent immigration attorney in Cleveland. How can you afford a lawyer? When you say you have nothing. When you believe in Jesus Christ and you start Almighty God, my help comes from heaven. I think a lot of people would like that same source to pay their bills as well. Yeah. You better believe. And that's who's been paying your legal bill. Yep. Even my food. Heaven. Yeah. 
You heard her refer to President Obama as her child. She does that a number of times. It is worth noting that she has not been sitting around for all these years. She does tell me that she has been active volunteering with a number of organizations, including the Boys and Girls Club and even the Boston Public Housing. Now, tomorrow night, part two of my exclusive interview, we're going to take a closer look at her relationship right now with her nephew, President Obama, and I ask her why he hasn't helped her get off public assistance, and also why the judge changed his mind and allowed her to stay in the United States after he already once said she had to go. Jack? All right, Jonathan, thank you. And by the way, you can watch tonight's interview again at WBZTV.com. And tomorrow, after part two, we'll post most, much more of Zetuni Onyango's Sit Down with Jonathan. You can search Obama's aunt from the homepage.